Uh, my name is Sean Donnell. I'm the owner and CEO of Mountain Rose Herbs, and we have a rich history that dates back to 1987. Uh, our origins actually date to Rosemary Gladstar, who uh, was a founder of Mountain Rose's origins. And we broke off and became a mail order company and eventually an e-commerce company. But we realized the value of having a retail store, a brick and mortar store, and that's exactly where we're at right now. We're in the heart of the Mountain Rose Herbs retail store, which is called the Mercantile in downtown Eugene. The Mountain Rose Herbs Mercantile is housed in a historic structure. It's on the National List of Historic Places. It was built in 1928, and this was originally a egg lane uh, uh, factory. And uh, what we realized, because our plan, our intention is to open up future mercantiles, the mercantile business model is built on agricultural history. So any future mercantile stores we open have to have um, either architectural elements or preferably a building that is historic in nature that captures that history of, of agriculture. I wanted to create a submersible experience where when you walk in, you're not even looking at the product. You're not even um, overwhelmed by commerce or buying things. You're overwhelmed by the space what's in here, the architectural history, the interesting artifacts, the antiques. And I know this may sound a little funny, but uh, Mason and Amanda and lots of people who know me know that I was born and raised in Southern California and I was born and raised in Disneyland. And Disneyland is a theme park and theme parks are all about creating experiences. It's not necessarily about the ride, it's about the themed part where the ride is located. And I did that with the Mercantile. I wanted to create like a themed experience where you walked in, every component of the Mercantile was consistent. You won't find plastic in the Mercantile. You won't find <clears throat> modern amenities or modern technology. If we do have modern technology, we actually cover it up with elements that are of a slight post-industrial scale. And I'll show, that, show you that later, primarily in, uh, in regards to monitor covers. But we'll take a walk around a little later and I'll show you guys what we got going on. Hi, I'm Sheena November. I'm the retail store director for Mountain Rose Herbs. Um, I was hired to open the store in 2016. I moved from Portland to come back home to do so um, because it was an opportunity that I could not pass up. Um, Mountain Rose Herbs has such a rich history in Eugene and I really wanted to be a part of a grand opening of something like that. So, I had no doubts whatsoever that this place was gonna be successful, but I had no idea how, how received it would be within the community. Um, opening, grand opening celebration was just insane. People were lining up around the corner to come in here to see this beautiful space we've created. Um, we have such an amazing showcase of our products and customers are really just enjoy what we have to offer. I have learned that People will come from all over the country to come visit this place. And it never ceases to amaze me. As soon as somebody walks in, they are completely taken aback by the experience that we've created. Whether it's um, just the overall ambience, like our employees are so you know, engaging and courteous and are really enthused about the products that we offer, but it's also this beautiful historical building that we operate in. It's um, just the experience that we've curated from everything from you know, our tester walls to um, the wide variety of products that we carry to um, just the overall feeling of, you, of the downtown Eugene area. We've really made, we've been, we've become a staple in the downtown area of Eugene and I feel as though um, this place will be successful for years to come. It's not only a very specific vacation destination, but it is a, an apothecary. It is a go-to one-stop shop for everything that you need for not even just, you know, like a well-seasoned herbalist, but for someone budding with interest in like, you know, fruity tea blends or, you know, like a really obscure type of herb. Like there's such a variety of offerings here that people are just enthused by the ability of, to have the choice of so many different products. So. Basically our jobs here at the Mercantile are to provide a casual conversation about the products that we offer. Um, we can speak from personal experience uh, over you know what products work for us. We can, we can talk about like diaphoretics, we can speak about Nervine so that because a lot of questions are pretty general and broad as far as like um, what helps with anxiety. So we have a wide variety of single and combination extracts um, that are just a great go-to herbal medicine. 
And then we have um, special and delicious syrups that make really good additions to beverages, hot chocolates and the like, or cocktails even. Um, I like recommending those for that. Um, herbal, uh, solar infused oils, which are great for body care recipes and that sort of thing. And then over here we have all kinds of salts and peppercorns and seasoning blends over there. So we also cater to culinary aficionados who, who would just want to um, you know, use basic spices in the kitchen as well. So a little bit more well-known, down to earth. So all of our extracts here, um, the syrups, the herbal oils, our capsule wines, our salts, peppercorns, and our seasoning blends are all curated in-house. So um, this is, we are a jack of all trades. We do so many things as far as herbs, spices, um, and herbal medicine goes. So um, we also have a bulk section over here. So we have a wide variety of both cosmetic and food grade oils. Um, we have clays, we have beeswax, we have all kinds of oils and butters. <laughs> 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 all right, so here we have our Coins for a Cause project. So this is basically something that was inspired um, by a few other local businesses, but more importantly, was something that we are we align with very strongly, and that is supporting nonprofit organizations. So, basically, what happens is that when a customer comes in, makes a purchase, and refuses a shopping bag, they get bequeathed with one of these five cent donation tokens, in which they can then choose to donate to um, a nonprofit of their choice, which changes quarterly, and then we. Yeah, then turn those over to the nonprofit. When I was eight years old, me and my family would travel to Nevada City, which is a historic mining community in Northern California. And back then, um, it was known as an antiquing community. So I got submerged within the culture of antiques and the adoration of all things old. So I've been collecting antiques since I was eight years old. And an interesting fact is everything in my house is an antique. Everything I buy is an antique. I love the history, the texture, the culture, the story of all things old. Um, and of course, that carried on to the Mountain Rose Herbs Mercantile. And everything that we have here has some kind of rich history, story, or texture to tell. And uh, right behind me is a historic candy counter display that came from Missouri. And at one time, these displays would be outfitted with gum and chewies and candies and whatnot. We actually outfitted it with uh, juniper berry, turmeric, and uh, roses. But this thing is probably, I want to say about 14 feet long. We bought it from an auction house in Missouri and had it freighted over and we completely outfitted it with herbs, which is a really nice touch. And then right here, these are the monitors that our staff use. And like I said before, I don't want any kind of modern element to be within the mercantile space. So we had Thomas, our creative director, actually create these kind of steampunk post-industrial monitor covers that actually cover that plastic monitor with a big Dale logo that we just don't want that in the experience at all. I have a massive collection of Edison Phonographic Records. So I have a passion for the Edison Phonograph and that shows with our antique gramophones which were actually converted into lights. But I think this is a wonderful, between the candy counter display and between the gramophone lights and the Mountain Rose Herbs Mercantile backdrop, this is definitely the signature piece right here. One of the prominent features in the Mercantile is uh, the famous National Cash Register. I think it's fitting for a retail environment to have a historic cash register, especially behind the more modern cash registers. But this register has a really fun, unique history. I bought this from an auction house about 10 years ago in Iowa, and it was completely covered in suit because this was a cash register developed by the National Register Company just for garages and mechanics. So on the buttons, you could actually see um, custom things for like tubes, tires, wash, parts, et cetera, et cetera. But the interesting thing is that it was locked and it wasn't opened uh, at, as far as we could tell at all. I'm also a, a collector of skeleton keys. I have a collection of thousands of skeleton keys. Come to find out, I had the perfect match. I had the skeleton key to actually open the drawer. I opened the drawer and inside was original tickets to a theater dated 1951, receipts from the car garage in 1951, and it was loaded with cash. It had silver, back then they were silver certificates, which was 
paper currency, but they were called silver certificates and all the change. Nothing was older than 1951. So as far as I can tell, this register was signed, sealed, and locked up in a barn since 1951. It was full of cash. But even better than the cash register, above it is uh, our very first catalog, circa 1991. Um, we only have a few copies of this available. Um, we actually, we have four. Three are in the archives, and one is mounted here for prosperity's sake. But uh, like I said, Mountain Rose has a rich history. It was started in 1987 by Rosemary. She broke it off into two companies, one of which was a mail order company called Mountain Rose Herbs. And uh, that was by a woman called Rose Madrone. And she operated that for a couple of years until 1991. And she sold that to Julie Bailey. And this was the first catalog that Julie Bailey created. And uh, yeah, we honor it here because that's our history. So another interesting component of the building is that uh, behind me, you can see the, the, the pulley wheels. Um, but I was actually recently reminded that this is the oldest elevator that is in continuous operation in the state of Oregon. It is fully permitted, it fully works, and downstairs below me is um, the offices and inventory warehouse, as you would have it, for uh, Mountain Rose Reserves. And we do occasionally use that elevator, but we try not to. But in addition to the elevator, another interesting aspect of the building is that it is outfitted with solar panels, which is really quite unique for historic properties. You have to go through a cabal of legal permitting requirements to outfit a historic structure with solar power. So we're really proud and honored in our tradition of sustainability and operating as lightly as we can on, plant, on the planet Earth to have at least a major portion of our energy come from solar power. Another key component of the Mountain Rose Mercantile in regards to the aesthetic experience will be the olfactory experience. And the products that we sell have a rich woven story that pleases the olfactory glands. And a lot of herb stores and a lot of natural food stores tend to sell these products without giving the customer the opportunity to experience that which gives them olfactory pleasure. So what we created is an herb wall where everyone can be removed from the wall, opened up, and taken in. So that way you can experience that before you decide to buy a packaged product. I've offered a community board um, because we really want to cultivate a community that's rich in um, supporting events that align with our values, but also, you know, events that might not get some exposure otherwise. So um, we offer space for herbal events, um, you know, mar smaller markets. Um, we advertise what we are doing next door in our annex, which we'll talk about a little bit more in depth um, here soon. Um, we still talk about our sister store, the Aroma Bar, which is right down the street. And yeah, just local events that are happening around us that we really want to highlight and, you know, have get more exposure for. So we originally leased the space without having much of a plan um, and then COVID happened. So we use it as like a meeting space and um, a space for creative to shoot video and that sort of thing for our marketing department. Um, but now that the world is kind of re-emerging from its cocoon, um, we have been making the space come alive, which is very exciting for the community. Um, as you can see here, we have a Sunday Annex series. Um, every Sunday from one to three, we have a different, either a nonprofit or a small local business owner or, you know, something to support the community uh, to be able to have this space free of charge um, to teach a demo or teach a class or do a lecture or a demonstration of some sort, you know. So, um, as you can see, we have a great lineup coming up. Um, just everything from like indigo dyeing um, to bitters building to talking about making natural perfumes, um, farm to flask with our local distillery Thinking Tree Spirits. So there's a wide variety of things that are happening in this space. And if you're interested in reserving the space for a particular event, you can contact me and these guys will let you know how to contact me. Mm -hmm.